Hello again, everyone. I hope you're doing well on this Friday afternoon. It is a pleasure to be joined by the one and only Max Holloway, who is currently in Las Vegas, uh, awaiting his flight to Abu Dhabi to fight next Saturday, July 11th, against Alexander Volkanovsky for the featherweight title, one of the most anticipated fights on this UFC 251 card. And I'm so happy to see Max because he's kind of like Sasquatch these days. I mean, he's so hard. <laughs> there was once a time it was just so easy to get this guy on the phone. Now you got to go through like eight channels of human beings to get him. But here he is in the flesh, Max Holloway. How are you, Max? Good. Errol Juan, you always give me a hard time. Man. You know you know how much fights I had last year? Oh, title fights? I had four title fights in uh, 12 months. You know how much media that comes with it? Sure, I go. I, I know. We co- we counted it. I did three hundred interviews. Wow. In twelve months, it's like, oh man, it's tough. I know it's your guys' job. I feel bad not talking to you, especially you, Errol. You know, you're the man. You're the man around town. You're the man to talk to. But uh, sometimes the guys just uh, just don't want to talk. You know, I just I just want to play video game. Tune into my live on Twitch or something. Maybe you can get a couple questions in there. <laughs> I, and I know you're you're very active these days on Twitch, and I, and I don't fault you for it. But look, if we can, can we start there? You've pretty much done no media in 2020, right? I mean, since your your fight back in December, you've done very little. I know you spoke to uh, our friend Rob DeMello a couple of days ago, uh, but other than that, you've been very quiet. Was there a specific reason for that? Uh, I was just, I think it was just a time to reset. You know, reset. I got to uh, enjoy uh, enjoy time with with the family. You know, I. Uh, I I got to become a second grade teacher, and I found out how hard second grade math is <laughs> for us. So maybe that's it. You know, uh, being a teacher is very stressful. To all you teachers out there, you guys is uh you guys you guys are something else, man. I I want to uh, I want to hit rush sometimes. I'm not no, I'm not getting to understand what it was. And it's just uh, we just had a lot of time. You know, I, I thought there was no no need really of 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 doing uh of doing media, you know, there's a lot, a lot of more stuff that was, uh, that needed, that was more important to us at the time. And we was trying to uh, do stuff in the background, you know, with all the pandemic stuff going on, a bunch of stuff going on in Hawaii too. So that's, that's what we was focusing on. Um, and of course, uh, you know, you and, and your team, your, your theory of maybe less is more was proven to be a hundred percent right because uh, you were kind of in the shadows doing your thing online. And then all of a sudden we're watching the UFC last weekend. They show a clip of the count, <laughs> at the countdown show and there's that glorious hair and everyone's talking about you and you got more yeah. buzz than anything going on uh, for this yeah. part. So tell us, is that, have you gotten a haircut since? Cause it seems a little bit shorter than. It's a little bit. Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit shorter. I, I got, we wasn't able to, uh, not that it was open. I, I wanted to keep it longer, but then my barber took it down a little bit because he knew I wasn't going to see it for a, little, uh, for a bit. And uh, and he knows it's going to grow back. So I think if I fight be a little bit more longer, a little bit more up, I love it. I love my hair. I love uh, I love the way it's coming out. I love the love that it's getting right now. And uh, it's in a great time. Did you, did you know that it would get that kind of reaction or were you kind of surprised by how much people were talking about it? I mean, uh, if you get on Twitch, you, you guys got to kind of see it. I saw people tripping out. I was like, oh, my gosh. I, I didn't know it was going to be that big. And then at Twitch, I even, like, I even took everything off at one point, you know, and everybody's tripping out, you know. So imagine if I had everything off that hair. It would have been, been a sight. So are we keeping it long from, from now on? Yeah, yeah. This, uh, the, you know, um, this is, uh, <laughs> like I said, you know, you know, in, Kobe's first uh, eight years, he he had hair. The the last eight, the last he 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 was like the skin fade type, you know, almost kind of bald. So, you know, the bless bless era is is still here. Let me rephrase myself from um from uh when I did the interview with Rob DeMello. Now it's in the blessed era we're gonna okay. be, <laughs> and it, it is what it was. You know, it's what we're gonna do. We're gonna keep it, and uh, now yeah, get get used to seeing your boy with a full flock of hair because uh, it's it's staying. Um, you know, obviously seeing the stuff that you posted on social media and, and also what you were just talking about regarding the pandemic and, and you're a proud father of uh, rush. What was it like training for this fight in the midst of all this? Was it challenging? Like was, was your gym closed in Hawaii? How difficult mm-hmm. was it to prepare for the fight? Uh, it was challenging. It was challenging indeed. You know, it was difficult, you know, but, uh, uh we're going to find out who the true fighters, who the true warriors, who the true people who really love this. Uh, uh, get to do it, you know. At the end of the day, I didn't want to put none of my coaches 
in harm's way or getting arrested or whatever. You know, the stay-at-home order in Hawaii was pretty serious. I know people was getting to gyms and stuff, but a lot of our – the way I was training was exactly like this. It was over Zoom. You know, they was doing Zoom classes and we was training. You know, I, I didn't really get to get too much, you know. But the first time seeing my coaches was uh, <laughs> meeting them at the airport for Vegas and coming here. So – uh, it's just how you adapt, you know. We, I, I'm ready. We're good. Um, one thing that I took away from this pandemic was actually noticing that sometimes in camp we do over push our body sometimes, and we do, you know, we do go over the line sometimes without even knowing. But just us fighters, and I, you know, especially me, I get in that mindset like, no, I gotta get to this training. I gotta get to this class, and it actually, you know, I I can say and look at you guys right now and say I didn't uh, get. You know, there's always that nagging injuries, but I didn't get no new injury. Every camp, I usually <laughs> get a new injury. And I usually tell you guys I don't have none because that's just us fighters, but I really don't have no new injury. I just got the same old injuries, and it's real nagging injuries, nothing serious. And it was just, it's just great. You know, I just can't wait to go out there and, and, and show the world and uh, get this blessed hero in full effect. So, wait a second. The first time you saw your coaches was at the airport uh -huh. coming to Vegas? Yeah, with with uh, uh, everything that we was doing was to uh was to Zoom, you know. We couldn't wow. you could if if you got caught at the gym because it was there's there was a uh, lockdown and stuff, they we could all get arrested, you know what I mean? And you don't want you know, there's a little bit more sacrifice for me on my end if I went there and you know they're going to make a point like they see my my butt out there be like, "Yeah, we let's get this guy," you know, let's make a point and put fear to other people. So we just did it smart. We did what we could. I stayed home and did a bunch of training at home. We did, did what we could do. And, uh, you know, I have, I have a lot. I don't, you know, the only thing, the only thing really that I was missing in this camp is like one of the things that this treadmill that we, that I usually use, but we figured it out, you know, we figured it out. And, uh, I, I think just, this is one of the best camps in the world uh, I ever had. Did you have any training partners or did you do it all solo via zoom? Solo. So wow. I, tried to, try, I tried to do everything as much as I can, stay away. And then especially when you see uh, people with this, uh, with getting COVID and then, you know, some of the fighters and the coaches get caught and then the fighters can't fight. It's like, it's super, it's, it was just super crazy seeing. So we was like, you know, like just lock down, be smart. You know, this is, this is what I do for a living and I don't want to miss that chance. Wow. So no sparring, right? No sparring at all. I actually... Kind of liked it. Uh, I kind of like not first sparring. First time, know? yeah. I, I first time yeah, first that? time not sparring. Yeah, I, I always used to. We, I was a big believer in sparring. I used to. I mean, you can talk to my, my coaches if you can get a hold of any of them. To be honest, but uh, <laughs> <Yeah>, I know. <laughs> at the end of the day, I was always about sparring. I, I love sparring, but you know, this camp actually opened my eyes. Like, man, we don't even have to spar that much anymore. You know, like I'm at a point in my career where. I, I know how to punch and know how to kick. I know how to apply it. So I spar, you know. So I get to actually do some movement rounds uh, here in the upcoming bit after this. We're pretty much doing two 48 hour quarantines. So I, you know, after everything, I got one of my guys up here, you know, Michael Nakao, my wrestling coach that I get to move around with. So I'm excited for that. Uh, was there any part of you that wanted to maybe delay the fight so that you could get a more proper training camp or were you okay with this? Not at all. Not at all. You know, uh, they laid a fight for what? You know, we're not, we're true fighters. You know, everybody like to call us modern day gladiators. You know, a lot of fighters like to call themselves modern day gladiators. But when it's time to fight, it's time to fight. You know, I didn't see no modern day, I didn't see no gladiators back in the day being like, oh, wait, you know, the line I was uh, training with is weak. So I need a stronger, I need to go find a stronger lion, you know, or, or I can't do this in, in this amount of time. Like, you're not, you're not a true fighter. People keep talking about, uh, I'm a fighter this, I'm a fighter that, you know, I want all the smoke. I want to fight whoever, you know. Um, and and you guys see it, you know. Like, if you guys think I'm playing around with DC, I know you guys do a TV show with them, and I know, I know and a talk show, and tell them, you know, the daddest man on the planet. That's who I got next. You know, after this, my eyes is fully focused on him in August. If, uh, <laughs> if one man can't make the walk, you know, there's a Hawaiian that's ready to, to step up. You know, you guys saw that action figure. They already know what's coming. The action figure got me heavyweight ready. You know what I mean? And uh, I, I'll get there. You like the action figure? And congratulations on that, by the way. 
I, I love it. You know, I love it. You know, there's some, <laughs> there's some, uh, uh, some jokes going around about me. That's the hair that people now, it's not even jokes. People now understand that I'm really serious about going to heavyweight. Did you see that? <laughs> you know, they, they, they put me in the heavyweight class there. You did look a lot like uh, DC in terms of body, uh, body size, <laughs> uh, so perhaps a sign of things to come. Could you tell us, cause this is so fascinating. We're talking to you, um, you know, Friday morning in Vegas, Friday afternoon here on the East uh -huh. coast, you're, you're still there. Could you tell us what it's been like the last couple of days? You, you left um, Hawaii on Wednesday, right? Yeah. And then what did Hawaii. you have to do? We left Hawaii. We came, we came here to the hotel and we pretty much been, been stuck in the hotel. You know, I, I got to do, uh, I got to do a workout. I went on the treadmill and worked out a little bit. Uh, they had a paper on top of the, the hotel the hotel over here, only one camp at a time. So you got to wait your turn. Thankfully, when I went down, no one was there. After I did that, we did the testing. And after the testing was full lockdown, we couldn't leave this place or whatever. We had to come back to our room. And, and then uh, we got an update of saying that, uh, yeah, I, I mean, everybody know about the testing that we got to take as soon as we get to uh, – Yes Island, but then there's also like a 48 hour quarantine over there that we found out. So it's just, it's just crazy. You know, we just, it's just, it's a, it's a new world. It's a whole new world. And, um, this is the, if this is steps we got to take and we got to apply them, we got to take them, you know, we got to, we got to play the game into, uh, the way I'm looking at it is I got like five fights before the actual fight, you know, this, this, this COVID test is, it, it's, it's real, you know, it's very, very dangerous. And it's, it's cool to see uh, UFC taking all the right steps and the right precautions for us as fighters. Have you and your team um, been told that you tested negative? Are you good to go? I died. We never find out yet. I don't know. I don't, okay. I don't know. I just woke up this news. Uh, I saw someone get tested positive, but then that was the one in Sao Paulo. So I was like, oh man, I guess ours and didn't come out yet. So hopefully we can, we can hear back here soon because, uh, like uh i just can't you know this is it's like i said it's like a fight it's like you're waiting for a fight you know right. so hopefully we can hear back soon and then you fly out tonight correct yeah we fly out tonight um the like they like they got it all break down they told us they told us exactly how it is they told us that they got a section of the airport all, all for just the fighters and the ufc staff i guess and should be super cool so you know it's been a long time i was joking about it and i hope you don't think i'm being serious but it has been a while since we we talked we talked before the fight not after the fight i was mm. uh on your youtube channel the max holloway youtube channel this morning watching your video blog for the fight and it's just amazing to remind um oneself of how well you dealt with that fight and the aftermath of the fight you were in really good spirits afterwards you went to get uh -huh. ice cream with your son and all that why were you in such good spirits after that because usually you know, you lose your title, you use your, your fight. It's, it's very emotional. You're down. You seem to handle it incredibly well. Why is that? Uh, because, you know, I told you guys, I told you guys already, like, uh, the, the belt didn't make me, I knew I was a champion. The belt was just to, to let everybody know that, look, I'm not playing around. I'm actually a champion. And the way I look at it, like I got, I got five championship belts in my closet at home. You know, nobody's going to ever going to be able to take away, take, take that away from me take that away from me. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just another fight. You know, I know, I know that we're going to see the, see, uh, I know we was going to probably run into each other sooner than later. And, uh, and he said it, you know, if you go look before I went, he talked or after I went, he talked and he said that, that, uh, that he wanted to rematch. He wanted to fight me. You know, he said that he, he, he actually called me out, you know, he called me out after our fight, right after our fight. So, you know, it was just things like it is what it is, you know, or it is what it was. You know, mm -hmm. it is what it was. And I was, uh, I, I was just, I, I knew I was going to fight another day. I, I didn't get no, no, no injuries at all from that fight. I felt good. I felt great. They wanted us to fight again that night. I, I would have been able to, you know, but at the end of the day, um, uh, you know, all the, you know, all the experts said, you know, all the experts said that he, he, uh, that he won the first, in, uh, the first three rounds. And then they gave me the last two rounds. Um, and, and, and it is what it is. That's, that's just what it was. I, I wasn't, I wasn't tripping, you know, there's, uh, three guys decisions that mattered that night and they all three went his way and, and there's nothing that I could be mad about. You know, it is what it, it was out of my control and what Bert Watson always say, you know, you leave that, leave that in the judge's hands, they always make you cry. And, uh, at night, you know, it was a sad one, but 
we're here again. Do you miss being the current champion? Uh, you know, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed for me, to be honest. I, I mean, not like I, I still feel like I'm the champion. I still get love like I'm the champion. I just gotta go out there and go fight like a champion. And um, you know, it's like I said, like I, I got five of those belts at home. Nobody's ever gonna take that away from me. And uh, you know, I'm. We we stood here. I'm still fighting, and I can't wait to go out there and uh, you know show the world again. Sometimes um, in in UFC history, we've seen people who had long winning streaks, who were champion for a long time, a lot of defenses. They lose the belt, and they kind of handle it like you. You know, DJ handled it very well. Anderson Silva handled it very well. Like you know, there's that saying, "Heavy is the head that wears the crown." In, in a way, because you are still treated as champion, but because you don't have maybe the obligations and the pressures of being champion. Is this a nicer life? Do you enjoy this? Not having, you know, that spotlight on you all the time? I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I don't have the spotlight on me. <laughs> I, I really don't, you know, I like it's, uh, we're just in a weird time. You know, if, if you look, if you from the outside in, like at the end of the day, uh, for this fight, I, I kind of, if people kind of make it feel like me and me and, uh, our fight is the, our fight is the main event, and then people stay talking to me like I'm the champion. So, at the end of the day, I don't, I don't know. You know, I don't know what the spotlight is. You know, I, I understand what it came with it. You know, a lot of people, these guys, a lot of people who's new to becoming champs, they think so, or 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 they win a big fight, they think so. Yeah, this is the one, and things change. You know, and and from experience, the only thing that I can tell you guys out there that when you're a champion, or or you win that big fight. And, and you're looking for that big change. The only big change that you actually get might be some contract stuff. But the biggest thing I can promise you is your media obligations. <laughs> That's the only thing that changed. These guys think so. They win the belt or they win a big fight. The glitz and glamour comes with it. They're going to start doing TV shows and blah, 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 this and that. None of that happens, guys. You know, that's on your guys' self. You guys got to go out and figure it out. UFC is giving us this, this, this uh, pedestal to help us get there. But at the end of the day, in the UFC, the only thing that really changed when you win something big or whatever is your media obligations. You can ask any any champion, any former champion. These guys, they 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 try to think like, oh yeah, I win this belt. Why am I getting why am, why am I not getting this love and so on and so on? It's it's because this is you know it's not something magical. Like you win the belt, you're gonna get like a million followers. That it doesn't happen. This ain't real life. You know you gotta go out there and work hard for it and. The only thing that really changed, I can promise you, is media obligations, and and that's about it. Uh, I'm I'm curious about something. Um, you know, from the moment that fight ended, you know, usually when someone loses the belt, they want to get a rematch. They're campaigning, they're posting things, they're doing interviews, they're banging the drum. You did none of that, and you had other right. guys like you know, uh, uh, Chan Sung Jung and, 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 uh, and Zabid and even Henry Cejudo all campaigning to fight him. And even as you said, Volkanovsky is saying he wants to fight you, but you never had to campaign. Even looking at your social media, you haven't even like referenced the fight. Like even when the, <laughs> the news came out, why is that? Why, why are you just going like stone cold, no referencing this at all? He, uh, he, you know, like I said, he called me out. What, <laughs> what am I going to do? Like he called me out. Like the fight, I like, you know, the last time I, I thought I thought the champion I thought the champion fights and um, at the end of the day at, at the end of the day whoever the champion wants to fight he fights and he called me out so I was like we're good I don't I don't need to say nothing why do I have to say anything and then you know with the fights you know like everybody know we fighting I mean my that my hair did most of the promoting for me so I'm like I'm good I'm check check that off we're good we don't have to be on social media too much so I'm I'm, I'm good all around you know it's. Uh, he, he asked for the fight. He asked for the fight multiple times, you know, even re like he asked for the fight, you know, that's just what it is. Like this guy called me out. So why, why I got to go out and banter and sell something, you know, when it's already said and done. And, and then uh, that video came out about my hair and uh, we're good now. I spoke to him a couple of weeks ago. He has what, what appears to be like a really big chip on his shoulder. I feel like he doesn't feel like he's getting the respect that he deserves. He says he wants to finish you now to put an exclamation uh -huh. point. What do you make of his demeanor? Have you seen any of his clips? Because he seems very fired up, almost like he's the challenger going into this fight. Yeah, I heard. I heard, you know, some people told me, but at the end, that's what I said. Exactly what I said, what I just said. You know, these guys think so they... You, this championship belt is like a magic stick, they think, and they think it comes with a bunch of stuff. 
the only thing it really comes with is more media, my friend. And I think I think he's finding that out. You know, that's what it is. Like, it, it, if you if you go back to the first fight, he said the same thing. He said that he was gonna go in there and take me down and ground upon me and finish me the first fight. You know, like if we if we're talking about like speaking and the way he talks is like not really taking that to any to consideration because he really talked a big game the first one, you know, and then the first fight happened. Is what it is. He got the W, but he didn't do anything he said. So why should I believe him saying anything right now? Why should I believe him what he's saying now? So I just can't wait. I can't wait for a fight. He's one of, he's uh, you know, he's he's the champ right now. Uh, he's on the chip on his shoulder. Like he doesn't feel like he's a champ. That's on him. That's a him problem. You know, I'm. I know where I am in my life. I know where I stand. Uh, like I said again, man, I got five belts. Five belts at home, you know. This guy can beat me two more times. I still have more belts than the man. So at the end of the day, I, I know where I stand and how I feel as a champion. And no, but I I need no belt. I need no nobody beating my drum. I I know where I am. I know where I stand. And uh, all all I left to do is fight. A lot has been made of the leg kicks in in the first fight, right? He landed, I think, around seventy five oh. or so. Um, what do you make of that talk? And and ultimately, do you think that's what won him the fight? Do you think that that was the deciding factor? Um, you know, I don't know. I wasn't a judge. Uh, I, I ain't a judge. But, you know, at the end of the day, like I said, all the experts gave him the first three rounds. Then they gave me the last uh, two rounds. They also, you know, uh, if we're talking about leg kicks, you know, with, or if we're talking about significant strikes, period, I beat him in body strikes. I beat him in head strikes. He only really beat me in leg strikes. And, you know, and let's think about it this way. if if Jose Aldo kicked me 20 times, I don't know what would come first, you know, the cure for coronavirus or me being able to walk, <laughs> you know, this, this guy hit, this guy kicked me with 80, 80 times. He lay kicked me. I had an after party I had to go to and I was dancing the night away, you know, so at the, at, at the end of the day, I, I, I don't know what it was, you know, it, it could have been the late kicks. Uh, it could have been them. Counting some of the leg kicks as significance, you know, could have been me changing my stance because of the leg kicks and so on and so on. But like that's just a guessing game. At the end of the day, he got it, and and that's just it, you know. If uh, exactly what I said, you know, like it's 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 cool. It's 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 that's why I'm not a judge, you know. So I'm a fighter, and people did their job, and I ain't gonna be mad at them for that. A couple of days ago, you said uh, you kind of uh, referred to him as. Uh, a potential point karate fighter, and this has uh, created a bit, a bit of a buzz <laughs> online. Uh, are are you referencing the fact that he just kind of, you know, doesn't have a lot of power in those strikes and is just looking to score some points? No, it's just you know, it's just I just you know, I just saying what it is, you know. At the end of the day, uh, and and he's over here, you know, like you know, with the Olympian talk, you know. I guess so. If everything did go his way, at least. He could try to become an Olympian, and then he got an Olympian on his belt too, you know. So, at that day, it was just a lighthearted joke, you know. It is what it is. I just was, you know, he was he was poking at him, and that, that's what it is, you know. I don't, I don't really take too much of it. The fight's a fight. We get to fight here in uh, what is it, eight days, nine days, whatever it is, and I just can't wait to get after it with him, you know. It's a, uh, it's gonna be a fun one. Okay, just a couple more things, and then I'll let you go. I promise. Thank you as oh, always no for the time. Um, any concerns? I'm sure you know this. The fight is technically going to be happening in the in the middle of the night, right? Um, well, I, I guess by the time you fight, it might be 8 a.m. Um, yeah. in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, 8 8 30, I think. I think the main card started at seven, right? And then there's a title fight in front of us. So yeah, actually, yeah, 8 39. Are you just going to stay on Hawaiian time zone? We're going to try. We're going to figure it out. I mean, uh, I think so. We still got media obligations out there, so that, mm. that that's one of the toughest things. So. I think so. If I, we can time it right, I think it'd be great. And then we still gotta, you know, the Wayne just do it their time. So it's just uh, we, me and my team. We've been discussing it ever since uh, yesterday. We still trying to figure it out, find it out, and I think we'd be all right. You know, I think we'd be all right. It's uh, I'm a fighter. We fight. You know, we, you know, it's fight or flight. And uh, I just, I just can't wait. It's an obstacle that that's very intriguing and should be fun. Any concerns because things are obviously a little different um, and you don't have the same sort of freedom to go out and do your thing about the weight cut? Mm -hmm. um, uh, no concerns at all. You know, it's just, it, it, it is tough. You know, uh, we had to do this too, pretty much 48 hours back to back quarantine, but 
we figure out a way. All right, we're going to figure out a way. We're going to get it done. We're going to make that walk come, uh, come uh, says, I guess, so Sunday morning over there, and uh, I can't wait for it. And uh, your son, Rush, won't be in Abu Dhabi with you, right? Uh, he, actually, uh, he might be in my corner. Who knows yet? Really? Man, I, 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 <laughs> That'd be I, wild. Say, man, yeah, that man had to be home. I know I put Mike Perry on you guys. You know, shout out to Mike Perry. For <laughs> that guy's a legend. But hey, I totally understand where you're coming from. You know, sometimes you just need that support system, and and, and that's what he needed, and he got it. But yeah, Rush is on, Rush is at home. He got a. He's pretty bummed that he couldn't come, but he understands what, what this. You know what is he kind of understand what's going on because he kind of knew like, look, they got you know school and stuff. He had to stay home after spring break and stuff. So I think so he kind of gets it. Uh, when's the last time he wasn't at a fight of yours live? Oh man, I think so. What? The la the last was the first Jose, I think. I think it was the first Jose Aldo fight. So it was that 2017? In Brazil. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then he was with he was with me from the Detroit one and all the way on. All wow. the through he's been coming to the fight. So I think so it's gonna take some time for him to to like comprehend it, but uh I, I think he'd be fine. And last thing, Max, you know, before the pandemic, um, and this feels like it was like fifteen years ago. Uh, you were very vocal about open scoring in MMA. Mm -hmm. In fact, you even went to an Invicta show and you uh -huh. sat there in Kansas. Um, uh -huh. And coincidentally, they had a show yesterday with, with open scoring. Invicta was back. Um, I'm wondering, after experiencing it, um, and again, it feels like so much has happened since then that we yeah. all forgot about that. Do yeah. you feel like there should be open scoring in MMA? I, I mean, it's, it's just like anything else, you know. Uh, uh, it's just, I think so. It should get a fair shake, you know. I think so. When I was there, my experience watch, watching, I wasn't really a fighter or, or anything, but just being a fan, I thought it was cool, you know, knowing like what was going on uh, and, and who was up. And then seeing the coaches talk to the fighters, some was telling them, some wasn't. Mm. And just, I, I just think it was a fair shake, you know. Um, at the end of the day, I don't know how it do in a UFC event, you know, the UFC event where, where there's, you know, 10 to 25,000 people. And and people screaming or whatever and this and that, but now that's not a case because we can't have fans. So I I really don't know. You know, I would love to see it. Me personally, if you got to tell me the scores, I would ask for them. I'd be like, yeah, let's know it. You know, let's. So there's no guessing. You know, so there's there's that like, look, I'm not telling you that you're losing, but these guys have you down three rounds. Like you need to go in there and go do make something happen. So. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.